Good morning, students. In the previous classes, we studied about subsidiary alliance, how the British people occupied. We studied about Mysore Anglo Mysore War, Anglo Maratha War, Battle of Plassey, Battle of Paksar. All that we studied. Today, we are going to learn about some more important points. That is, how did British expanded their territories? How did British expanded their territories or their administration? A British expansion started in 1805 to 1848. Okay, so we can understand very clearly how the British people expanded. Here you can see British people conquered, British has conquered the north and southern parts of India. At the same time, here Java, Java, Sumatra, these two were occupied from Dutch. These two were occupied from Dutch and also Singapore. Singapore also they occupied. After that, Kingdom of Nepal and Burma. These two areas also they occupied. Okay. See, we can see almost the, all the Asian continent is under the control of Britishers. How much interest they are showing on the Britishers, on our Indians, we can understand very clearly. Okay. Next one here in 1843. What is that? 1843 was annexed in, annexed by Sindh. Sindh is a river. I mean, near river, western part of Uttar Pradesh, uh, western part of India, north western part of India. Okay. So here it is very clear. So these are all the areas which are occupied. Here, one important thing which is a strong kingdom of India is Punjab. Punjab is ruled by King Maharaja Ranjit Singh. Punjab is ruled by the King Maharaja Ranjit Singh. He is very uh, friendly with the Britishers. He is having well trained army is there, like European army. A strong military forces are there. As long as the King Maharaja Ranjit Singh is ruling Punjab, no foreign countries try to occupy the Punjab region. Understood? So, over, over a time, we know that very clearly, King Maharaja Ranjit Singh died in 1839. He died. <laughs> he died in 1839. Understand? So when he died in 1839, we know that obviously as a hereditary basis, King Maharaja Ranjit Singh's son name is Dilip Singh. His son name is Dilip Singh. Dilip Singh occupied the throne in 1843. His son occupied the throne in 1843. When his son, his son is not as strong as his father, that is Maharaja Ranjit Singh. So he is somewhat lean compared to his father. He is unable to maintain the law, the strong army, unable to maintain the administration. So because of that, British thought that it is an advantage for them immediately. And they came forward immediately, they declared the war with the Dilip Singh, who is called the son of Maharaja Ranjit Singh. And obviously, he was defeated in the year 1849. When he defeated in 1849, Punjab region also went under the control of Britishers. Understood all of you? Next comes Dalhousie. Again, now the Britishers showed their attitude to occupy the remaining part of India. We can understand here Dalhousie. The Lord Dalhousie, he also introduced one important thing. That is, what is the thing that he introduced is, Lord Dalhousie, he introduced the doctrine of lands. What is that? Doctrine of lands. He introduced doctrine of lands. This is doctrine of lands introduced by Lord Dalhousie. He, he was a governor general. He ruled from 1848 to 1856. So we can understand very clearly here what does doctrine of lapse says. So British people introduced some different kinds of policies to occupy India according to their own circumstances. Understood? Now here Dalhousie also, who was a governor general, he ruled India from 1848 to 1856. So at that time he introduced doctrine of lapse. What does it say? Doctrine of lapse means, for example, if the kingdoms are ruled by their own local rulers, if there is no natural heir born son, naturally son is there for them, his son is going to continue that administration. If there is no original son or heir for the king or for the queen, we can understand that the area will be 
is going to go under the dominion of British status. Understood? So, if at all if they wanted to continue with their adopted son, they have to take the permission from the British government. They have to take the permission from the British government. Understood all of you? So, in such a way, many of the regions went under the control of British dominion. dominion. What are those areas? Satara, Nagpur, Jansi. These areas were occupied under the administration of Dalhousie according to the doctrine of Lacks. Understood? If there is no natural head born son, if they wanted to adopt a son and continue their administration, they have to get a prior permission from the Britishers. If not, they have to give a hand over that area to British dominion. That is called doctrine of life. As soon as we studied about subsidiary alliance, what is subsidiary alliance? Subsidiary alliance means they have to take care of the British army. If they fail to take care, that area also is going to go under the British dominion. Understood? Next here, one important critical situation here is Awad, which is there in Uttar Pradesh. <coughs> we can understand clearly here, Awad is ruled by Wajid Ali Shah. He is not an uh, extraordinary key ruler. He is a Nawab of Awad. So, because of his reluctantness, because of his laziness, because of not having proper administration, Dalhousie thought as an advantage in 1856, Wajid Ali Shah was defeated and Awadh also annexed in the dominion status of British. So in this way British has started exploiting the Indian administration and bringing under their British dominion. Tomorrow we are going to learn about the administration structure of the Britishers. Children today go through this, I explain briefly how the British people try to occupy the India. Here you have to learn about doctrine of lacks. Understood all of you? Go through the completed topic, take care of your health. Thank you.